Welcome to Behold the Real Jesus Broadcast, brought to you by the Jesus Only Broadcasting Network, located at www.jobn.tv, where you can go and see and hear the preaching of the Apostles' Doctrine of Christ, the Jesus Only Doctrine. If you've been tuning in this week, we're talking about the Word of God in judgment in the last days, for the Lord will bring to pass His act, His strange act, and His work, His strange work. For I have heard of the Lord of hosts a consumption decreed upon the whole earth. O oh, earth, 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 hear ye the word of the Lord. It's not to destroy mankind, but it's going to separate the chaff from the wheat, the righteous from the wicked, the holy from the profane, those that serve God versus those that do not serve God. It will fulfill the work of God in the work of the ministry of Jesus Christ in the last days, the body of Christ coming unto perfection and to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, growing up into him in all things. Because they not only believe to believe on Jesus, but also to suffer for his name's sake, Paul said, being made conformable unto Jesus' death, that we might win Christ and be found not having our own righteousness, which is of the law, but the righteousness of God by faith. Let's get into the broadcast. And uh, we're talking about two different temples. A temple there in the physical, literal temple that we're talk many talking about are going to be built again on the Temple Mount, the Mosque of Omar being torn down, the Temple of God there being rebuilt again, is a Hiaron. It's an actual physical temple. That is a Hieron, a brick and mortar temple of God. But it also is a spiritual temple of God, Christ in you, the hope of glory, naos. Naos there is Christ in you, the hope of glory. What? No, you're not. Your body's a temple of the Holy Ghost. You're not your own. You're bought with a price. This is uh, the spiritual temple of God. We see there that in 2 Thessalonians, uh, the, the second chapter that we're talking about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and are gathering together unto him, the rapture. You can see I've highlighted uh, some verses here, scriptures. The mystery of iniquity doth already work, only who now let will let it to be taken out of the way. Why? Because this Antichrist is going to call a great falling away first. The man of sin is going to be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshiped, so that he as God setteth in the temple of God. Now, if that was a physical, literal temple, it would be, Paul would use the word, hieron. But he doesn't. He uses the word naos, just as Jesus did when he said, destroy this temple in three days, I'll raise it up. Well, the Jews said 46 years. We are building this temple. Hieron, they thought he was talking about a literal, physical temple. And said it took 46 years to build this Hieron, this physical temple, and you're going you're gonna to raise it up, you tear it down and, and destroy it, and in three days raise it up. They did not understand that Jesus spoke of his body, the temple, as his body. That temple is a naos. That is the physical temple because all the fullness of Godhead dwelt in Christ Jesus bodily. He is the Father of glory revealed in a body of flesh and blood. Not a trinity, not a binitarian, but one God. When the God's the one that will send strong delusion, that they all, that they believe a lie, that they all might be damned who receive not the truth. Neighbor, God has given us the truth. We must believe it. Uh, we must uh, understand these things uh, that will come to pass. 
This is the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Now, with that said, there is a work of God. Now, in Daniel, he told us that there is going to be a polluting of the sanctuary of strength. And to pollute that sanctuary of strength, the heathen, Psalm 79, the heathen are coming to thy sanctuary, O God. They've come into thy temple. And why? Because uh, the dead bodies of thy saints, they have spilled the blood of the saints. When this is what we find in Revelation, the blood of the saints and the prophets are found in Babylon. And Mr. Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. You'll find here that it says here this, this daily sacrifice is taken away by reason of transgression. And it casts the truth down to the ground. It can't, cannot cast the love of the truth down to the ground. But it can cast truth down to the ground. Uh, they're literally practiced and prospered because it hates the holy covenant. It hates the body of Christ. It hates the name of Jesus. This one saint speaking said to that other saint, to that certain saint, that certain saint is uh, in the Hebrew palmoni. That means a wonderful numberer, the revealer of secrets, that this secret was revealed unto Daniel, that there'd be a stone hewn out of a mountain without hands, smite the image in the feet, and destroy all that kingdom of darkness, and the stone grew and filled all the earth. There's the kingdom of God spreading, and all shall know him from the least to the greatest. When you see here that this sanctuary, that sanctuary will be cleansed after 2,300 days. That's days and evenings, uh, or 1,150 on each one. And he talks about the vision. When he's seen the vision, not a die vision, but one vision. Without a vision, the people perish, knowing the work of God in the last days. Now we see here in Daniel 9. Daniel 9 talks about the 70 weeks, which 70 is the number of restoration or restitution of all things. And in Acts 3.20 and 3.21, we find that the heavens must receive Jesus to the times of the restitution or restoration of all things. Jesus is not coming back until the bride has made herself ready through the work of God in judgment. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. And we find here that from the going forth a commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem. Now, not Jerusalem, not the natural Jerusalem, but that Jerusalem which is above, which is the mother of us all, Seven weeks and three score and two weeks. And we find that after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. He's going to the cross. Now, Jesus will confirm the covenant with many for one week. He starts his ministry at age 30. In the midst of the week, he's cut off, but not for himself. It's a ministry of three and a half years, a time, times, dividing of a time, 42 months. 1,203 score days, and there remains another three and a half year, time, time of that, 42 months, 1,203 score days of the work of the ministry, of the Jesus ministry, with this gospel being preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. That's what we're seeing here. And the Messiah will be cut off, but not for himself in the midst of the week. And the prince shall come, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end thereof shall be with the flood. And many people say, well, that's happened in 70 A.D. when Titus, the son of Vespasian, destroyed the temple. Isn't that natural? But now, in the prophetic, we're talking about that naos. Just as Paul said to the church in Thessalonica in 2 Thessalonians 2, that that Antichrist opposes all that is God or that is worship, so that he as God set it in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. He does not use Eron. He uses uh, Naos. And this is what we're seeing here. He shall the, confirm the covenant with many for one week. There remains, therefore, that week is a heptad. There remains another three and a half year, 
work of the ministry and the Jesus ministry with this gospel being preached in all the world for a witness in all nations uh, and uh, the end will come. And in the midst of the week, he's going to cause a sacrifice and oblation to cease. Jesus, in the midst of that week, nailed the ordinances of that law to his cross. Thereby, the sacrifice and oblation ceased. The law there was fulfilled. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. What's that? That's the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, even to the consummation, to the end of all things. And that determined will be poured out upon the desolate. We'll also see in Daniel 12 that from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away. Notice that sacrifice was written in. It was not in the original manuscript. So from the time that daily shall be taken away and the abomination that maketh desolate set up. That is not a little S-I-T set down in a temple. It's an S-E-T, a state there. There shall be 1,290 days. Blessed be he that waiteth and cometh to the 1,305 and 30 days. Why? Because he's alive at the Lord coming. He has overcome to the end, 45 days longer. And uh, for the time, times they have three and a half years. And that prophetic is three and a half years. But it's another 30 days. Why? Because it is adjusted for the solar, the sun, clove of the sun, uh, and we add a leap, second Adar in there for 1,290 days. Prophetic, lunar, and uh, solar time being fulfilled in all things, time to be no longer. And uh, that this is that Kodesh. Notice here in when it says that sanctuary, it's not Heichel, it is Kodesh, which almost all the time is used uh, in a spiritual sense, metaphorically, just as we saw over here in Second uh, Thessalonians uh, the second chapter when Paul said that, that the Antichrist sits in the temple of God, not a Hieron, not in the Hebrew, Heichel, but a Kodesh. Well, not a Hieron here in Greek, but a Naos, a spiritual temple, which temple we are. Well, that means that there's a work of God coming in here in the last days. And as we go on, we're going to see in... Uh, Revelation 6, that there's going to be this time of great tribulation we're going through. Notice under the fifth seal, when he had opened that fifth seal, I saw under that altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. What's the testimony? The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. What is that? Knowing those things that are coming upon the face of the earth to try the earth. To love God is to keep his commandments. Revelation 12, the remnant of the church, which keep the commandments of God. Those are the ones that love God, keep his commandments. And have the testimony of Jesus. The testimony of Jesus is knowing these things that must shortly come to pass. These are the things of faith, for faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. This is the faith that was once delivered to the saints. This is uh, the testimony which they held, which is knowing those things uh, that are coming upon the face of the earth to try the earth. They said, uh, those that, ones that were slain, said, O Lord, holy and true, does thou not judge an avenger of those that dwell upon the earth? Uh, each one of those are given white robes, and it said, watch this here, rest for a little season until your fellow servants also and your brethren that should be killed as you were, should be fulfilled. We are going to go through a time that whosoever killeth you will think that it is God's service. These things they will do unto you because they have not known that Jesus is the Father, that he is the Son, is the Father of glory. We see here in uh, Revelation 7, God's getting us ready as it was in the days of Noah. So shall it also be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. There will be a sealing. Well, before the hurt, the earth and the sea and the dry land, 
there is an angel ascending from the east. The east is RMD 144, which means that is the work of the Holy Ghost, not of ourselves, not us uh, preparing for ourselves, but cease from our own labor, entering into that rest of God, and this angel ascends from the east, and it has the seal of the living God. Somebody said, we're sealed by the Holy Ghost to the day of redemption. Yes, I know. But as we go on in, we're saved, we're being saved, and we will be saved. We're saved by faith, and that is by grace through faith, but grace reigns through righteousness. And whosoever we yield our members of service to obey him are the service of whom we obey, whether of a sin unto death or we have the Holy Ghost, we can go of obedience unto righteousness and then from righteousness unto holiness, which is uh, partakers of God's divine nature. Well, here we have uh, the seal of the living God and the church is uh, uh, literally getting prepared for what's coming upon the face of the earth. What's coming upon the face of the earth? Well, in Revelation 9, we see why we're sealed in this truth, the present truth. Not Pentecost, Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, promise to you and your children, many that are fallen off, far off, even as many as the Lord of God shall call. But for this work of God in the last days, this strange work, this strange act, which is a judgment of God, judgment late to the line, righteousness to the plummet, measuring the temple of God. Literally separating the wheat from the chaff, separating the righteous from the wicked, the holy from the profane. This is that consuming fire that the only the holy, only the righteous will be able to stand in that day, for it will surprise the hypocrite. We find here in Revelation 9 that there is a smoke coming out of the pit, and they open the key to the bottomless pit, and the smoke of a great furnace, and locusts came out of that pit. That is that northern army upon the earth. That northern army out of the north, a great evil shall befall all the inhabitants of the land. These locusts come upon the earth, and it was given them power. As the scorpions of the earth has power, notice that these scorpions, uh, this, this locust army, this locust horde, this northern army of Joel 1, it only hurts those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. That's the reason it is so necessary to press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That's the reason it is so necessary for us to stir ourselves up. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Why? Because there's a day. Seek him in the day, for the night cometh in which no man can work. This is a torment. They should be tormented for five months. Notice it's not tormenting the righteous that have the seal of the living God in their foreheads. It's not hurting them, only the men that have not the seal of God in their forehead. Well, what happened? He said, it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Noah prepared an ark to the saving of his soul. That ark there is the same ark that we signed there, or the ark of the testimony. That testimony is the testimony of Jesus. That is your ark in the last days that it was in the days of Noah. Well, you're going to receive a seal, and it will, it will keep you uh, from getting hurt or a little being deceived of that locust army for five months. Well, we find also that in the days of Noah, the waters prevailed upon the earth for 150 days, 30 days in a prophetic month, which is five months. For the heavens, the windows of heaven, started on the second month in a great deep broken up and went to the 17th day of the seventh month. From the second to the seventh month is five months, exactly the time of this locust horde in Revelation 9. If for those that have the seal of the living God, they will have their ark and go through it unharmed. They will not lose their souls. Didn't say they wouldn't die. I said there, not one hair of their head will perish. They will not be deceived. This goes on to greater in the work of God. In Revelation 11, we're going to find uh, that we are going to measure the temple of God. Now here again, 
We need to know if that's a he or Ron, or if that's a naos. Well, in every place in the book of the Revelation, when it says temple associated with God, the temple of God, it is always uh, naos. It's the bride of Christ. It is the church of the living God. There was given to me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God. And the altar and them that worship therein, the court was without, leave out, measure not, for it's given to the Gentiles, the holy city shall be trodden underfoot. Forty-two months. Well, forty-two months, time, times a half, three and a half years, is exactly the time of the work of the ministry. So we're saying at a time of great power given to the saints of God, there will be a time of evil such as never been, such as was a nation, neither shall ever be again. In the great tribulation, the devil coming down to you, having great wrath, knowing that he hath but a short time. How much of the time? Three and a half years, 42 months, time, times and a half. And this is exactly what God will do when the devil comes in like a flood. And we, God's raising up a witness against him, and he's given power unto his two witnesses. Those two witnesses there are not the physical Elijah and Moses or Elijah and Enoch. They are the two olive trees, uh, and this two olive trees or the two golden candlesticks is a church. Uh, we find it in 1 Kings 6.23 that the olive trees, the cherubim of glory, were made out of olive trees, 10 cubits high, 5 cubit wingspan, literally touching the two olive trees, covering from one wall of the 20 cubit and the holiest of all, touching the walls of salvation from one wall to another, the other cherubim to touching hands to the other. These are not the cherubims and the ark of the testimony, where they're out of the mercy seat, looking toward the mercy seat, and they're in the mercy seat, but these are the two olive trees. They have the Zechariah for the two olive branches, two olive trees, the two sons of all. These are the two witnesses, which as Jesus said uh, in John 8, I'm one that beareth witness of myself. And my Father that sent me, he beareth witness of me. There's two witnesses. What is that Spirit of God in the body of Christ? That's the reason you find in Revelation 10 that John is eating the little book, the Bibliorhythm, the little book. And he was told to prophesy again to many peoples, kindreds, nations, and kings. Why John? Because there's your two witnesses. John means Jehovah favored, who foreran Jesus' first coming, John the Baptist in the spirit of Elijah. Who's going to forerun Jesus' second coming? John, uh, Jehovah favored in the body of Christ in the spirit of Elijah, the spirit of the Holy Ghost. Those two candlesticks is the church. Fire proceeds out of their mouth. That is the fire who makes the ministers a flame of fire. And the fire of their enemies, not with guns, not with Uzis, not with any kind of uh, carnal weapons, but the weapons of our warfare being the Word of God. And we'll see that this temple is again that naos. It is not Hieron, it is naos. As we look again in Revelation 13, we see that this Antichrist, this this dragon, the old serpent, the scorpion, the devil. This beast there has seven heads, ten horns, and upon his horns, ten crowns. And the names of blasphemy is blaspheming the name of Jesus and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Because Jesus is the head, the church is the body of the Christ. He's coming against everyone. The beast has the feet of a bear, uh, likened to a leopard, and mouth is the mouth of a lion. Dragon gave him his power, seat, and great authority. Where's that seat? Well, that seat, we're seated in the heavenly places of Christ Jesus, where he set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places for usward, to us. Jesus said, I'll prepare you a place. But where's that devil's seat? Well, it's Pergamos. Revelation 2, Pergamos, where Satan's seat is, where Satan dwelleth. There's the seat of where? In the church, Pergamos. We find that there. Uh, coming there with false doctrine, literally coming against the church of the living God. And some will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrine of devils in these last days. We find here that 
The world wandered after the beast. Not the church of the living God, but all that are in the world. A worldly Christianity, a crossless Christianity will wander after the beast. But those that do know their God will be strong and do exploits. They worship the dragon. Well, they thought they was worshiping God. They worship the dragon, which gave power to the beast. The beast there is a false son of God. It's a false Christ. It's an antichrist that does not confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. And uh, there was a mouth given to him speaking great things, blasphemies. Power was given him to continue how long? Forty and two months, time, times and a half, three and a half years, exactly the time of the great work of the ministry of Jesus going out through the earth will be great tribulation against the church of the living God, just as it was in the former reign. In Acts the 8th chapter, there was great persecution against the church. And at Jerusalem, there only abided, only above the apostles. For all the saints were scattered abroad, went everywhere preaching and teaching the kingdom of God. Well, what is going after God has accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, the church of the living God? Daniel 12, then all these things will be finished. No more will they say, Blessed be the Lord God which brought up his people out of the land of Egypt. That won't even come into mind. But yea, brother, rather, blessed be the Lord God which brought up his people out of the land of the north, south, east, and west, whithersoever he had given them. And we find here the mark of the beast is the number of his name. It's the number of a man. And that's a false Christ. It's the false Jesus. Neighbor, I see your time's gone again. This is Brother Dennis Beard saying, Behold the real Jesus. Well, praise God, neighbor. In the last days, the Lord God himself, Jesus Christ, will send strong delusion upon all those uh, because they received not the love of the truth that might be saved, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Well, we're making an offer to you for this month called the Great Deception. The key Z stigma, the 603 score and six, and the revealing of that beast, the number of the beast, the number of a man. For a gift of $15 or more, just mention DBM, offer number 60, and we'll get the book, The Great Deception. 603 score and six out to you. The mark of the beast, the number of a man, 603 score and six, the key Z stigma, out to you. I know that'll be a blessing to you. Well, until the next time, this is Brother Dennis Beard saying, Behold the real Jesus.